Hello and welcome back to the channel UiPath with Jeppe. It's more than two years ago I made my first videos and among the very first ones were videos about Action Center. And a lot of things have happened to Action Center since then and also the audio on those old videos is really, really bad. So I thought it was time to just do uh, new versions of those videos. So um, in this first one, we are just getting into the very basics of Action Center. It's very, very simple. And I'm going to make more than one video on Action Center. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, and also, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. So with all of that out of the way, let's just get to it. So just one quick uh, PowerPoint slide to give you a, an impression of what Action Center is really all about. When running automations, typically the automation starts and it runs and then it finishes. And then another automation starts, it runs and it finishes and everything is good. Except if you have an automation that runs up to a certain point, maybe it needs input from a user. Well, if you have an automation that sort of stops in its tracks, then all other automations that would like to run or that are queued to run, they'll just have to wait. And that's not a really good idea. So what UiPath did was they invented Action Center. An Action Center is basically a place where an automation can create a task and then enter a suspended state. And while the task is waiting for someone to complete it, other automations can run. So, so everything doesn't stop just because one automation needs input from a user. And then when that user gives his or her input to the automation, the automation exits from the suspended state and runs to completion. So that's the basics of Action Center. Starting an automation, waiting for user input by creating a task in Action Center. When the user completes that task, the automation can continue and run until it is done. So in order to even use Action Center, we need to have it enabled in our uh, cloud platform. So this is my cloud platform. And uh, if we look over here on the left, we can see that I have Orchestrate, I have apps, integration service, and admin and automation ops in the marketplace. I don't have Action Center. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to go into admin. Then uh, in our list of tenants, I only have one. You'll want to check that uh, it says Actions here, and it doesn't. If it is here, but it is grayed out, it could be because Action Center is installed but has been disabled. And then you will want to expand the tenant here and then uh, find a switch like this one and enable Action Center. If it's not here at all, you want to go up here, show more actions, go to tenant settings, and then check actions here and save. And then in just a few seconds, you should have Action Center both installed and enabled. There we go. So now I can uh, click Action Center. And this will take me to this sort of dashboard where I can see all of the actions that are pending, completed, and unassigned. And in this view, they are sorted by priority, either critical, high, medium, or low. Or over here on the right, they are sorted by type because there are five different types of actions that you can create. In this video, we're going to do form actions. They are the simplest kind. External actions, I've done a video on that, so make sure you search for that on my channel. I'll put a link in the description below actually for that video. And the document validation and classification actions, they are related to, of course, document understanding where you use the validation and classification station. And then finally, data labeling is a new, I think it's still a preview feature actually, that has to do with how you train machine learning models. So we're also going to skip that in this video. So up here, we have um, three links basically to these pending actions, completed actions, and unassigned actions. And this will simply take us to the inbox of our actions just as if we click this inbox uh, link up here. But we'll just stay in this dashboard page for right now, and then we'll go into Studio. And here we are inside my empty project. And the first thing I'm going to do is just a log message activity. And in this log message activity, we're just going to write a simple log message that we want to add the numbers two and three. Very, very simple log message, right? And then in order to build our automation, we need to install a couple of packages. So we'll go into Manage Packages, and we will search for a couple of packages. The first one is going to be the persistence uh, activities. We'll install that. And then we will also need to install the form activity library package. So we'll install that, and we will save. And with those two packages installed, we can now search for an activity that we're going to use that is called create form task. 
and we will drag that into our sequence here. Now, this we'll need to provide with some information. Of course, the task title, we will just call it uh, Action Center Calculator. This is the stupidest Action Center automation you can build, but we're just going to build a simple automation where you can add a couple of numbers inside of Action Center. So, uh, we'll leave the task priority at uh, medium. We are not going to use a task catalog in this video. We'll get to that in one of the next videos. And then in the form data collection, we need to create some uh, arguments for the form that we're going to use. So we're going to put into the form two numbers, numbers two and three. So we'll just create uh, an argument called the first number. That is an ingoing argument of type int32. And the default value is going to be two. Second number is also going to be an ingoing argument of the type int32. And the default value will be three. And then finally, we will create uh, an outgoing argument. And we will actually prefix that with out result. And that would be an outgoing argument also of type int32. And we will save that in a variable that we will call result. And we will click OK. Then we will need to provide also a task object, a variable for it to put the output of the form action. So we'll create that. Press Control K and we'll just call it my task object like that. The final thing we need to do is actually open the form designer and design the form that we will present to the user inside of Action Center. Um, so when I click this open form designer, what we're going to see is sort of a pre-made form from the arguments that we are putting into the form. So we defined three arguments, first number, second number, and out result. And those are then already uh, sort of pre-made and as you can see, the first number and the second number fields are grayed out. That's because you cannot actually enter anything into them. But we will ask the user to fill in the result of adding these two numbers. The user will write that in the out result box and then press the submit button. Let's make a few modifications to these text boxes. The first one, we'll simply call it first number. And if we go to the field key tab over here, we can see that it says first number here as well. And that is simply the name of the variable that it will be expecting and then put into that text field. So I'll save it, go to the next one, type into the label, second number, and we'll see that the field key for this one is called second number in camel case. And again, that's because that's the argument that is receiving um, from the automation. And we'll click save again. And out result, we will type in add numbers and enter result here. And the field key for that will be the out result outgoing argument. So we'll click save. And now we're basically done with the form. We can do a quick preview here and we can see what the form will look like when presented to the user. We'll exit the preview, save the form, close the form designer. And now we've actually created the task that the user will see inside of Action Center when the automation runs. Now what we need to do is we need to wait for the user to complete that action. And funny enough, there is an activity called wait for form task and resume. I'll add that to my sequence here. And the task object that we will use inside of this wait for form task and resume activity is going to be the my task object object. And the same for the uh, outgoing we'll also just use that same thing. And that really is all we need to do in order to make this automation work. Now, there are more things and more options you can make use of, but we're trying to keep it simple in this first video, then we'll get into some of the details in the later videos. One thing we'll just do now is we'll write another log message. And we will just put in the result is and then use the result variable and convert that to a string. And this result variable is the variable that is being filled out. If you recall up here in the uh, form data collection, the out result variable that we get from the text field inside of the form, that result is then being stored inside of this result variable. And that will then be shown inside of our log message here. So this is the automation. This is really all there is to it. 
This will create a form action, wait for that form action to be completed, and then continue running after the, the form action has been completed. Now there's one more option we need to set before we run this. Go into the project pane. This is very important. Go to project settings and then set this option, supports persistence, to yes. Click OK and we're good to go. So what's going to happen now is a little bit different from what will happen once we run this inside of Orchestrator in production, so to speak. What we'll need to do is we'll need to start this automation, then go into Action Center and complete the task and then come back to Studio and then actually tell the automation to resume. But for now, I'll just click Run on my automation here. And what we can see now is that the automation is actually paused. And we can see up here on the normal Run button, it says Resume. And if we click this, you know, well, we'll try to resume the automation, but we can't because that task that we're waiting for completion of has not yet been completed. So if we go into Action Center, and do a quick refresh. We can see that there's now one unassigned action inside of Action Center. That means if I click this, we'll go to the inbox and to the part of the inbox that says unassigned actions. We can also click the inbox and then go to the unassigned part. And we can see here that there is an Action Center calculator action waiting to be assigned. Up here, it says to complete this action, assign to self. Well, I'll click this link and then by doing that, assign the action to me, then I'll be shown the form, and now I can I cannot change these first number and second number boxes, but in the result uh, field, I can type in whatever I want. I'll type in 45 and then click Submit. Now, once I have done this, an automation running in production would pick up by itself, and I'll show you this in just a few minutes, and then run to completion. But because we're debugging inside of Studio or running this from inside of Studio, we need to go back to Studio and whereas we couldn't, uh, well, we could press the Resume button before, but it wouldn't do anything because the task hadn't been completed. If we press the Resume button now, we can see that the task runs all the way to the end. And if we go to the Output window down here, we can see some log messages. We can see that the task was created, uh, and then the task was suspended. We tried to resume it, and it failed because we hadn't completed the task, and we did that a couple of times. And then finally, we did... Um, start the execution again after we had completed the task and the job actually did resume, wrote the log message that the result is 45, although that is incorrect. It's what we put inside of the form and then the execution ended. So this is what it looks like when you're developing and running inside of Studio. But what does this look like when we run it in Orchestrator? Well, let's try and do that now. In order to do that, I'll need to publish the automation and I'll just publish it it should then be uh, uploaded into my orchestrator. There we go. We jump into my browser, go to orchestrator, and we can see here in my automations folder, I don't have any processes in here. So what I'll do is I will add a new process, and we should have a brand new package inside of here called Action Center 01. And I will just click Next, Next, and Create, and Close. And now we have um, a process that we can run. So what would happen now if I ran this process is, I'll just uh, minimize a couple of windows here. I have my unattended uh, robot sitting on this virtual machine here. So if I run this uh, job now, what should happen is the job will run on that uh, machine and then it will enter uh, a suspended state. I'll just make this a little bit bigger because we really don't need to see because nothing is going on on the screen here. But uh, if we run it, we will see that it is running right now, and pretty soon it should enter a suspended state. There we go. It uh, switched to the suspended state. And that means that the automation can no longer run, so it signs out of the machine up here. So other automations can run. Now, if we then go back into Action Center, and I'll actually split this up into two windows. So now we have our Action Center here, and we have the orchestrator here. Because what I want you to see is what happens when I click or complete the action inside of Action Center. So we can see we have a job here. Uh, how do we do this? How do we arrange these windows? Like that, maybe. 
and then the other one over here. So as soon as I go into the unassigned tasks here, we should see that there is a new unassigned task. I'll assign it to myself. I will enter a new result, 444, and click Submit. And as soon as I submit, what we should see happen, I'll actually minimize this a little bit. We should see this job over here resume. We can kind of see it says suspended here, right? We should see the job resume, sign into my machine over here, run to completion, sign back out, and then the job should be completed. So let's try and do that now. The job is running again, signs into the machine, signs out. That went very, very quickly. And the job completed with success. This really was the basic uh, demo of Action Center on how to build an automation. But there is something that's really cool, and that is, of course, the Orchestrator mobile app. So let's just have a quick look at that. Okay, so what we have here on the left side is, of course, a live connection to my phone. And on my phone, I have this UiPath Orchestrator app. And when I then sign into the Automation Cloud, it's going to ask me what service I want to connect to. We will use uh, the uh, UiPath with Yebe organization. And then that will uh, actually load up inside of the the app here. And we can see what we have, all kinds of stuff, uh, you know, what jobs have been run. And we saw that there was a job run. Ah, oh, this is my workspace. I need to switch to the right folder, which is the automation folder. And then we can see actually the jobs that we ran just a few minutes ago. So what I'll do is actually, I'll just uh, go out of the app or minimize it at least, and then run my automation here in my browser. And what should happen when I run this is that the automation will run, of course, on my virtual machine here in the background. It will get to the point where it will actually suspend the job, and we should see that in the orchestrator window at the bottom. There we go, it's suspended. And now what we should see on the phone is actually pretty soon a notification pop up that I have a new task waiting for me in Action Center. And sometimes it just takes a little while for that notification to get here. So I'll just pop that into the uh, the app. And what we can see if we go to uh, actions is that there is one unassigned action waiting to be assigned. We will uh, view that action. We can see that it's unassigned. I can click uh, up here in the right hand corner and say assign to myself and complete. And then I get the option of actually filling out the result here. And we'll press uh, 52 this time because I'm not very good at math. <laughs> and then when I click the su Submit button here on my phone, what we should again see is that the job inside of Orchestrator go from suspended to running mode. And we should actually see that job pick up in the virtual machine at the top. And there we go. It's running again. It's already probably going to be finished very quickly. There we go. The job was successful, and we can see also here in in my phone that you know uh, it has been completed by me. And of course, if we go to Orchestrator and focus in on that, we can see that in the job here that we just uh, completed. If we view the log for that, we can see all of the stuff you know that it uh, it started the execution. It's waiting for the task to be completed. The result was 52 as we entered inside of the phone. And then everything is, is done and the execution ends. So that was just a little uh, a tiny uh, kind of cool feature, you know, this, this Orchestrate app. Because you can build automations and assign actions to specific people. And those people will then receive notifications on their phone if they have, of course, the, the Orchestrate app. And that makes Action Center very valuable. Because then you don't have to wait for people to get to the computer and all of that. They can just fill out and complete the actions right on their phone. So I hope you liked the video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please click the little subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Do it right now, because then you'll be notified when I put out the next videos in this series and also other videos on my channel. So that's it for now. Until next time, stay safe, take care. See you then. Bye-bye.